Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here and today you'll be using your wits to deceive and uncover deception by fellow players as you attempt to discover who among you is a werewolf. Ultimate Werewolf is a social deduction game that is for 5 to 30 players. It takes 30 to 60 minutes to play, and it's for ages 14 and up, and published by Bezier Games. Today, we'll be doing a rule school where I'll teach you how to set up and play the game, as well as how to become a better moderator and introduce you to the free app while moderating so that you don't have to read the rule book yourself. Now, I've placed timestamps below me in the description of this video just in case you want to jump to a specific section of the rules. Well, let's get started. In this interactive game of deduction, you'll be given a roll card and be on one of two teams, the villagers or the werewolves. The villagers don't know who the werewolves are, nor will they know who the other villagers are. However, the werewolves will get to know who each other are, but they're trying to remain undiscovered while slowly eliminating the villagers. It's played over multiple rounds that consist of a night and day phase. Each night, the werewolves secretly eliminate one player. And each day, all players discuss who they think the werewolves are and why. The players vote to eliminate a single player, trying to find a werewolf in the process. But they might end up eliminating a villager by mistake since the werewolves are trying to cleverly talk them into that. Each team has additional special roles, like the seer, who looks for a werewolf each night to help the village team. Now the object of the game depends on which team you're on. If you're on the villagers team, you win if all the werewolves are eliminated. However, the werewolf team will win if at least half of the players in the game are werewolves. So let's talk a little bit about the flow of the game. Now the game requires a moderator, and that person will be responsible for setting up the room, choosing the right set of rules for your group, and explaining the game and answering questions, and I'll go over all of these later in the video. When selecting a moderator, if anyone has already been a moderator in the past for any of the Ultimate Werewolf games, that's a great choice. If no one has, if anyone's even played any of the Ultimate Werewolf games, that's also a great choice. If no one in the group has any experience with any of the Ultimate Werewolf games, then simply make the moderator the person who's the most experienced gamer. The game takes place over a series of game days and nights, and each day the players will be discussing who among them is a wolf and to vote out a player. Each night, the wolves will choose a player to eliminate while the seer learns if one player is a wolf or not. Now I'm gonna go into the details of how you set the game up and how you select roles towards the end of this video, but let's first talk about getting people gathered. Now you'll want to arrange the chairs in a circle, similar to how I have the cards laid out here, giving each player a few inches of space on either side of their chair. And if you're playing with people who don't know each other, it's best to provide name badges or stickers so people can see each other's names. Once you've secretly dealt each player a roll card, again we'll talk about building the deck for the game a little later, you'll want to remind players that their card is always to be kept secret and you can say anything about your roll but you can never show your card to anyone unless you the moderator tell them to. Now in the first night the moderator is going to call out the roles of the wolves and the seer separately to find out which players are in those roles. The wolves will get to see each other but the villagers won't wake up at all at night. So the moderator will go through a script like this. So they'll say, everyone in the village fall asleep. In other words, all players should close their eyes. Now after the moderator has checked to make sure that all players have closed their eyes, they'll say, wolves, open your eyes and look for other wolves. And the wolves are gonna be open their eyes and they're gonna be doing this quietly so that nobody hears them. And once the moderator has seen that they've all made eye contact and they know who each other are, they'll say, Wolves, close your eyes. Now they'll pause a little bit, then they'll say, Seer, open your eyes and point to a player. Now since the wolves have their eyes closed and so do the normal villagers, the seer will open their eyes and silently point to a player. Now the moderator will give a thumbs up if that target player is a wolf and a thumbs down if they are not a wolf. Then they'll say, Seer, close your eyes. They'll then pause to make sure that's done and then they'll say, 
everyone wakes up to find that the wolves have overrun your once peaceful village. It's up to you to find and eliminate those wolves. All players open their eyes. Now during the first day, you'll introduce the players by going around the circle and having them say something about themselves. This could be as simple as, my name's Bob and I'm a villager. And it might be something more elaborate such as, I'm Bob the village donut maker. And as everyone knows, werewolves don't like donuts. Now players should not claim to be a wolf or the seer. Players with those roles should hide their true identity and should instead claim to be a simple villager. Now players can say anything they like, but again, they can never show their role card to anyone. Now after the players have introduced themselves, the moderator describes how to nominate someone to be eliminated because they suspect that player is a wolf. So they'll say something like, to nominate a player for elimination, point at them and say, I nominate Bob. Now, if another player seconds the nomination, Bob will be able to defend themselves and then will vote. Thumbs up to stay or thumbs down to eliminate. If you eliminate a player, their role will be revealed to everyone and the village will fall asleep immediately. If not, you'll continue discussions until the next accusation. Now, the way this actually works is if more than half of the players vote thumbs down on a player, then that player is eliminated. So in this case, with nine players, you'd need to have five thumbs down for a player to be eliminated. Now, if that player is eliminated, they may not speak once their card is revealed and they should leave the circle, but they should stick around to silently watch the rest of the game. Now, the moderator should set a predetermined time limit on the length of the first day, such as five minutes. And if no one's been eliminated by then, the village falls asleep immediately. And be sure to inform the village when the time's almost up. Now, every night after the first night, the moderator calls the wolves and has them point to the player that they'd like to eliminate, but the wolves must all agree on their target. So it's important for the wolves to be doing this quietly because they don't want anyone to hear them moving around or mouthing things, but let's say they all agree that this one they wanted to eliminate. Then the moderator will have everyone go to sleep and they'll have just the seer open their eyes and they'll have them point to any player. So for example, the seer might open their eyes and they might point quietly to this player. And again, since everyone's eyes closed except the seer, the moderator will give that seer a thumbs up if that player that that seer pointed to was a wolf or thumbs down if it's not. Then they'll have the seer close their eyes and then they'll have everybody wake up, which brings you to the next day. And at the start of every day, the moderator will announce the player that's eliminated by the wolves in that previous night, and they'll show that card to all players. In this case, the player was eliminated. They'd point it out and show everyone this card. And again, this player is eliminated. They can stay close by, but they must remain silent. And this flow will continue going through every night and every day until either all the people on the werewolf team are eliminated. In that case, the village team wins or at least half of the remaining players are on the werewolf team and then that team wins. So let's give the moderator some tips on how to create the best experience for those that are playing and then we'll get into how you actually build the teams and the specific roles. Now as the moderator, your role is critical but you're the least important quote unquote player in the game. It's your job to make sure that each of the other players feel that they are critical to the outcome of the game and you should be invisible during the day, only helping to facilitate voting and to resolve issues. Now, when explaining the game to new players, it's important that you go over the high level concepts that I've already covered here, like that there's a village with wolves in it, and you go over the winning condition for each team. You'll talk about the basic day and night flow, and then the rules about the nighttime, rules about elimination, and the different roles that are in the game. You also must make sure that they all know that eliminated players must be quiet and leave that area. Make sure you take questions from any of the players because there's some things during gameplay that can't be talked about that have specific things to do with roles. As the moderator, you want to keep the game moving. If conversation starts to falter, you want to encourage accusations, but you want to be careful not to add any of your own editorial opinions or information that could be interpreted by the players to provide the identities of any of the roles. Now it's best to use a timer with a short time limit for each of the day's discussion, and you can use the free Ultimate Werewolf Timer app to help facilitate this. But you should also know that people that are involved in a heated debate, you probably want to let the discussions continue for a little while, even if the day is a little longer than usual. 
Now each night when you're calling out the roles, be sure to walk around the players, changing directions often. Be sure not to speak to anyone directly because you don't want anyone to know who you're talking to. Also try to take different amounts of time between your requests so the players can't deduce anything from how long it took to do any action. Also be very careful to refrain from any gender-based pronouns like he and she and his and hers because those can give information to the group that would be unfair if you happen to be accurate. Now this is a great team building exercise when played properly. It's a great way to get to know people on a team that doesn't normally have a great amount of interaction and a fun way for a team to build relationships on a personal level. Now it can be played in meetings, following presentations, as a part of larger workshops, and as a refreshing break from back-to-back -back seminars, education programs, or corporate training. Now, building the deck for the game can be a very fun exercise for the moderator as you'll be selecting which roles are in the game. Now, so far we're teaching you the basics of the game. I've been showing you the villager, the seer, and the werewolf as these are the three most basic roles in the game. So now let's tell you which roles you use and how many of them for different player counts. For six to eight players, you're going to use one seer card, one werewolf card, and the rest of them are going to be villagers. So for eight players here, we would have six villagers because you always want the total to be eight with one seer, one werewolf, and the rest villagers. And that's for the player counts from six to eight. If you're playing between nine and 11 players, you'll simply add a second werewolf and again, add as many villagers to get to the, the player count that you're playing with between nine and 11. Here's an 11 player count setup. And if you're playing between 12 and 15 players, you'll add a third werewolf and again, adding as many villagers to get to that player count. Here's a 15 count player setup. Now, if you're playing with more than 15 players, for every five players above that, you'll add an additional werewolf up to the maximum player count. For example, if you're playing with 16 to 21, again, you'd add an additional werewolf and add villagers up to that max player count. Now, up until this point, we've been talking about the village team, which is this dark blue, the werewolf team, which is this dark red, and we've talked about the seer, which is a light blue. That is a village support role. So let's show you some of the other roles in the game that you can use to set up. Now I'm gonna talk about balancing these roles in just a moment, but just to show you that there are plenty other light blue village support roles that you could choose from. We're gonna go in through some of these in great detail in just a moment. Now there are two other types of roles. There are the werewolf support roles, and these are sort of that lighter red. And then there's the brown independent roles that are different from all of them. Now, typically speaking, the support roles, like the Sears or support village, they win with the village team. The supporting werewolf side, the sorceress, they win with the werewolf. But the independents, they're completely different because they win on their own. And to take that further, these independent roles, if they win, no one else wins. For example, the Tanner. Now the Tanner hates their job and their life and they only win if you're eliminated. So the Tanner is actually trying to act like a werewolf so that they get eliminated, but they try not to be too obvious because everyone will think, well, that's a Tanner move. They want to be eliminated. So you kind of want to be like caught in a lie, but not make it look like you meant to be caught in a lie. It's a very interesting role to play. But again, if the Tanner wins, nobody else does. Does. It's a very fulfilling role to win with. So let's go over some of these other roles. The hunter is a village support role, and if they're ever eliminated, they immediately eliminate another player as they're leaving the game. Now this happens the next morning, because let's say the werewolves decided they wanted this one to be eliminated, and once everybody wakes up in the morning, the moderator is going to eliminate the hunter. But at that point, they get to eliminate someone else, and no one else can talk until the hunter makes their decision as to who they're eliminating. Now the witch is another one of those village support roles. It is pretty powerful. At night, after the werewolves secretly decide which player is gonna be eliminated, the witch will open their eyes, and if they want to, once per game they have this option, they can either save who's about to be eliminated because the moderator will point them out silently, or they can eliminate any other player, but they can only do this one time per game. And then once morning comes, the moderator will discuss what happened. Now, if you're playing with the Masons, again, these are village support roles. If you're gonna play with the Masons, you need to play with both of them. And during the first night, both the Masons will get to open their eyes and see who they are. So they both know that they're both Masons, they're both on the village team, and they're trying to make the village team win. However, no one in the village may directly or indirectly speak of the Masons, or the players who speak of them are eliminated that night. For example, some roles might even get to learn 
certain people's roles. So if someone, one of the Masons, showed their role to someone else secretly, they could not mention that they were a Mason. Now, the Sorceress is a werewolf support because it's light red, meaning they win alongside the werewolf team, and each night they get to learn if a player is the seer or not. So when everyone else's eyes are closed, they'll ask the Sorceress to, to wake up and point at a player, and then the moderator will give a thumbs up if that Sorceress points to the seer, or a thumbs down if it was not the seer. But also keep in mind the Sorceress does not know who the wolves are, even though they're on their team. Now the last role I'll show you about in detail is a wolf cub. They're on the wolf team, and each night, along with the wolves, they get to choose a player to eliminate. They're basically acting like another wolf. However, if the wolf cub is eliminated, the wolves will eliminate two players the following night. Meaning in the night after the wolf cub's eliminated, the werewolves will be able to point to two players instead of just one to eliminate. Now once the players are familiar with the basic roles, you can start adding in these different roles, and you can set up the game as custom as you like. Now how to do this is to try to balance the game. At the bottom left of each of the fence posts, you're going to see a number. All of the village uh, players and village supports are going to have a positive number where the other sides are going to have negative numbers. And you want that to equal as close to zero as possible to have a balanced game. In here, we actually have an exactly balanced game where you add up all these numbers, subtract all those numbers, and it's exactly zero. Now you won't always get to zero, but try to be as close to zero as possible for a balanced game. A positive total helps the village team, while a negative total will help the werewolf team. Now as the moderator, you also can decide how to tilt the game. For example, if your group contains many people who don't know each other, the wolf team will usually have an advantage. So you can add about a plus five points worth of special roles in order to balance the game. However, if your group contains mostly experienced players that have played any of the Ultimate Werewolf games before, then the wolves need a boost, and the balance should be a negative number for that group. Now, if you don't want to select the roles yourself, you can download the free companion app, which will help you select the roles, but it will also help you keep track of which players are which roles. Now, we've made a separate video specifically for how to use the Moderator app, and the link for that video is in the description below. Now, in order to use the Ultimate Werewolf with the app, you need to have the newer version. And the way you can tell is by looking at the backs of the cards. If it has this QR code, then it's compatible with the app. The roles in the rules have extra information about the roles that isn't covered on the cards. That information is useful whether you use the app or not. Well, I hope this helped you dive right into Ultimate Werewolf faster than you normally would if you had to read the rulebook yourself. Now, if you have further questions about the rules, I've placed the link below me in the description of this video, and that's the best place to ask them since I'll be notified, but so will Bezier Games.